keep it up. All right, so I rasterized, I lassoed around this watermark. There's a lot of line art here. I want to give myself some open space. So I'm just going to start cutting out some squiggles, getting rid of some faces. For my 16-year-old's birthday, he wanted to watch the movie Face Off. Classic. So I am taking the faces off. <laughs> it is a fun movie. Kind of a bonkers movie. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Cage is good. All right, so I'm going to take these borders off, and any kind of line art I don't think is all that interesting. And remember, I can delete, but I can also transform. You know, alter it, distort it, change it, even after I brought it in. So to do that, I can go up to Edit and see where Free Transform is, and then the shortcut it reminds me is Command T. That will bring up this transform box. I can right click within that transform box and use my favorite thing called warp and kind of push and pull this like it's printed onto Silly Putty. Make it into something I like. Because I pushed and pulled from the edges that I had already deleted, that brings things on to the canvas that I have to delete. More of. And I'll do another little squiggly. Now let's move on to the next. So this is in multiply mode, so I can see both of them. So now this is what I've got. It's kind of fun. Right. Now the next one. So I'm going to turn off. You can think of this as isolating layers, though we're not going to use isolation mode in this because it can be difficult to move between the two. So the way I isolate a layer is just to turn off the eyeballs that I don't want to look at. Right. So I know what I'm looking at. This has got a lot of stuff in it, but I know I don't want this text. And so if I delete it and then it gives me this warning, it just reminds me I can't delete until I rasterize. I can warp it. I can rotate it. Photoshop allows you to do a lot with smart objects that didn't used to let you do, but you cannot delete it. You cannot physically change the pixels. You can only stretch them and rearrange them until you rasterize. So Once you rasterize, you can do everything to this. Yes. Yeah. Everything we're doing here is the same in PhotoP. So these can all be practiced right on these files. You know, this PSD file can be opened in PhotoP. And in the afternoon class, we're doing just that. We're doing all this stuff the same way, looks the same, just in PhotoP. So there's a lot of cool line art there, but I want to get rid of some of these faces. This is from a Hanna-Barbera cartoon called Herculoids, but the same designer. I like the blob character. Yeah, that's a, there's some great characters. If you guys are fans of Cartoon Network and uh, Space Ghost and, oh, yeah, Space Ghost cool. and the Falcon, Harvey Birdman, <laughs> all of those were designed by the same guy, all in the 60s. Same with Johnny Flash guy. Yep. And then Super Friends eventually. And all those DC animated and shows. It was like what was uh, called the Racers, right? They had the racing cartoons? They had wacky w racers. That yeah. was a different designer, but that was a whole other thing that was, oh, that was? pretty cool. Yeah. But that was all Hanna Barbera, too. Oh. I, I love that. Yeah, I like. I Lots like of creativity that. looking back in commercial art history. Right. I like the. Snidley and the little mm -hmm. dog, him and the dog. All right, so I've kind of cut out a lot from that. Let's see now if we layer all three of those together. That's looking pretty good, but then when I see them all layered together, I think, you know, I don't need this anymore. And so this is a good lesson in. You can only delete from the layer that is highlighted, that is selected. So you want to be careful what you're selecting. And you want to always be mindful of what layer you have. So would you recommend deleting the faces? I, I would, just because 
And this is just an exercise. We're just getting used to the tools. But faces are kind of an automatic focal point. Mm -hmm. And when you have a ton of focal points, right. it, it keeps people from seeing it as a whole. Yeah. Right? Basically. It's like why we don't have faces on wallpaper very often. Right, right. <laughs> They're focal points that kind of you lose the flow, the overall aesthetic of it. Yeah. And type it is the same way. It's kind of an automatic focal point. So you want to be very careful how you use it. So in something like this, I'll just take all the type out automatically. All right, let's isolate. I'm four, four in. This one looks like it's not very black and white, right? A lot of grayscale. So what do I do? I go to image, adjustments, levels. And let me, sh that's exactly what you should be thinking. And I, in older versions of Photoshop, like 2021 <laughs> and back, it would give me that warning. In newer versions of Photoshop, this is just where you can get in trouble and I'm showing you. It will let you do it, but it will look a little different in its interface. So I'll turn it to black and white, right? Then I say OK, but notice it's still a smart object. But now it's a smart object with what's called a smart filter, like an attribute to an attribute. This is helpful in some ways, but for our purposes, it's just confusing because it still won't let me delete from it. So when I rasterize it now, then it brings all those attributes into those pixels. So it doesn't really matter if you do adjustment before or after, but I would recommend always rasterizing first. Whenever you want to change the pixels, rasterize it first. Because to have full control, you'll have to rasterize. And then for this, let's see, what do I want to keep? I think I just want the shoulders. So I'm going to be really aggressive here. Let's talk about face off. Uh, I'm always telling my, my boys about new media I think they'll like. And there's a comic series called Head Lopper. That's pretty great that my 16 year old is now into. So I'm just going to lop the heads off. Head Lopper. It's very cartoony. Hasn't been turned into a Marvel property yet, but it's a comic. Like an independent yeah. All right. So, I mean, Headlopper would actually be good line art to use for this. But so far, so good. I've got four layers. Now my last layer is right here. I already took the faces off. Let's get rid of that whole gun. Up, oh, I tried to delete something. And I did delete something, but it was on a layer that I had the eyeball turned off on. So undo that. You can accidentally affect layers that aren't visible. Like the eyeball is just whether it's visible to you or not. But I need to be highlighting the layer I want to affect in order for it to change that layer. That, that would be really useful, wouldn't it? So I'm going to show you how to do that. But you can't do it this way, right? So for instance, you can select multiple layers. I did that when I merged them. So let's say I select all five. And then I just want to delete this from it. Nothing happens. And that's because you can't do simple like selections from multiple layers at once. But once you have everything kind of placed in a way you want, if I have them all selected, I can use the Move tool, and I can move them all together. And even though they're separate layers, if they're all selected, I can use Command-T, and I can transform them all together, which is really handy. I can even warp them all together without having, oh no, I can't warp. I can do everything short of warping. But they'll probably add that in somehow. Because Photoshop keeps expanding these abilities. But I can distort. You didn't used to be able to do this. You know, I can do certain things to them. But it's kind of like rasterizing. Once you have them all placed in a way you like, but now you see I've placed it in the middle of the page. I like it. It's fun. But I've got all this little extra garbage on the sides. And I don't want to have to go through each layer. 
and like find which layer it's from and then delete that. So isn't there a way I can just affect all of these at once? And so at this step, this is a big moment. We've got it. They're all clean. They're all black. They've all been rasterized. They're all separate. Now what I'm going to do is click on the top layer. So it's selected and everything is visible that I want visible, even the white background. Right. And what I'm going to do is hold down the option key, which is close to your spacebar. And while I'm holding down that option key, I'm going to go up to layer options. And I'm going to click on merge visible. And I don't use the shortcut for this. It's a three key shortcut. The only three key shortcut I ever need you to know for this class is command shift four. Right? Command shift four is screen grab. Every other shortcut will be a two key shortcut. The reason I don't use this three key shortcut is because you'll notice that option isn't one of those. So first let me show you what happens if you do this without holding down option. Merge visible. It's the same as flatten image. It will take everything that was visible, just make it one layer. That's not desirable for this because I spent a lot of time arranging those individual layers so I have control of those individual layers. So I'm going to do Command Z, get those back. Now if I do the exact same thing but I hold down Option, when I click on Merge Visible, it will give me a new layer that's merged on top of all of my existing layers. That isn't in any tutorial I've ever seen in Photoshop. That is no book or manual I've ever seen in Photoshop, but it is incredibly useful. <laughs> so hold down Option to merge, and you'll get the best of both worlds. So then I turn the eyeball off on all my others. Or if you want to be a little bit more professional about it and a little bit more efficient, select all those earlier layers. And then instead of clicking where the little post-it note that's a new layer, click on the folder. And that will group that into a like all of your old layer group. And then you can just turn it all off at once. And all those layers are in there, but you can keep it kind of clean. And if you want to be really, really professional, you can right click on where that eyeball is and give it a color. And just like my folder of references is red, I'll usually make my, my source layers red. So now I have one layer that combines everything, which means I can delete from everything all at once. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> as long as I'm on the right layer. And if you find yourself doing that a lot, you can also lock layers so you can't accidentally affect them. And that's what this padlock is about. Now I can do everything, because now it's all just on one layer. So now if I hit Command-T and I want to warp it, I sure can. But I can't do that on multiple layer selections. Yeah, so I can kind of make it into the shape I want. I can also go to Image Adjustments, and if there's still some nagging little gray in there somewhere, I can clean that up. I can kind of... goose the the highlights and the shadows so that everything's just clean black and white with a little bit of anti-aliasing so there's a little bit of gray pixels at the edges just because that helps make it look a lot smoother so now if there's anything I want to do I can work on it right here where they're all combined if there's something i want to delete if there's any refinement i want to make this all works so let's let me just lasso out a little bit there we go now you'll notice where i have them layered on top of each other you'll see this faint little outline around some of the shapes and that's because of anti-aliasing that's kind of the gray that's left over from it. I'm going to show you how we can get rid of that. And so the last step, once you've merged them, is you're going to double click on the layer, just where it's highlighted. And these are what are called layer styles. And the layer style we're going to click on is called color overlay. And when we click on color overlay, we're going to change that, that mode to normal. These should be the defaults for you. And we're going to change that color to solid black. 
And I, I like to click the only web colors so that 